Alrighty, so we were looking at um, quadratic functions. The main form, I guess there's three forms to it. This is the standard form. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. A gives you the direction of opening and C is the Y-intercept. Well, most questions are gonna be in this form. And it would require you to put it at least, if you want to graph it, um, it needs to be in this form. Where S and T are your x-intercepts. And then finally, using the x-intercept, you can find H, which is x1 plus x2 over 2. And to find K, you just plug H back in. And once you have these two, you can get the answer in the vertex form, which has which looks something like this. So those are the three forms of a quadratic. Um, the vertex is a little bit weird because if you have the x-intercepts, it's kind of easy to see where the vertex is because it's going to be in the middle of the two x-intercepts. But sometimes what happens is there are no x-intercepts. Like, for example, like this guy here. It's never going to pass. It's never going to go through the x-axis, but it still has a vertex. Every parabola, this is called a quadratic function, a degree two function, has a vertex. You see this? Mm -hmm. Even though it doesn't go through the x um, axis, it has a vertex. So this approach may not work. Okay, you're not always going to have symmetrical points. So this approach is mostly when you when it passes through the x intercept. When it doesn't pass through the x intercept, you're going to have to do something called completing the square. We will see it when we get to it. But there you go. These are the three forms of a quadratic. And once you have that, things become pretty easy. Well, here, look at this. This is a very simple question. It says, find the x-intercept, y-intercept, axis of symmetry, and the vertex. So this one, um, remember, y-intercept, to find the y-intercept, set x as 0. That's all you need to do. So if you do this, this x and this x disappears. So that becomes 2 times negative 4 times positive 2. So that's 4 times negative 4. That's negative 16. That is our y-intercept. Is this guy opening up or down? You see, this is your a value, the number that's on the outside. That's a positive number, right? Mm -hmm. So is it opening up or down? up. Now, is this, a better question would be, does this graph have any x-intercepts? You do a quick logic check here, right? You don't always have to do this, but I just want to show you that if we have a parabola opening up and the y-intercept is negative, right, it has to pass through the x-axis to get to that. Again, it could look like this. There's an infinite ways that it could, it could look like this. Doesn't matter what it looks like. We don't know that just yet, but we know that because this variable is opening up and the fact that the y-intercept is negative means it has to go through the x-axis. So it, it is gonna have x-intercepts, okay? This one is more useful um, when you need to use a quadratic formula. Sometimes, it'll ask you to find the x-intercepts if there are any, right? So instead of doing the whole math, you can just be like, hey, the logic says it doesn't have any x-intercepts, so I'm not gonna use the formula. Anyways, this one has, okay? And we can see that it has. To find the x-intercept, all you gotta do is plug y as zero. So y becomes a zero, two, x minus four, x plus two. Uh, from here, Divide both sides by 2. This 0 over 2 is a 0, so that 2 kind of disappears. Like this. 
Uh, and then it's going to have two x-intercepts. Either the first bracket is going to be equal to 0, or the second bracket is going to be equal to 0. And you can only split it like this if the thing is in factored form, which it is. Factored form just means bracket times bracket. Anything like this, that means it's in the factored form. But not like this. Look at this. x squared plus 3. You can't be like x squared plus 3. That, that's not how it works. Okay, or like x squared plus 3. Not like that, because that's a addition. It's not multiplication. But if you have x squared plus 3 times x or something like this, then yeah, then you have two individual brackets. This would be in the factored form. Um, and remember, on the other side of the equation, once things are in factored form, to get to this, there has to be a 0 on the other side. It can't be like a 3 here. If it's a 3, you can't do any of this. It has to be a 0 on the other side. So now that we have this, what's the first x-intercept? If x minus 4 is equal to 0, what's x? It's 4. It's 4. The other one is negative 2, yeah? Mm -hmm. So we have the y-intercept. We found the zeros. By the way, x-intercept just means the zeros. Okay, zeros and x-intercept, they mean the exact same thing. Axis of symmetry. Now, axis of symmetry is a line that cuts the graph into half. And that line always goes through h. h is the x value of the vertex. Okay, you see this, this, this? That's our h. Axis of symmetry is literally that line, the dotted line. To find h, all you have to do is Add the x-intercept and divide by 2. So this is the formula for h. So our first x-intercept is 4. Our other x-intercept is negative 2. So we get 4 plus negative 2 over 2, 4 minus 2 over 2. It's a 1, right? To find the k value, what do you do? Once you have your h, how do you find the k? You plug h in the equation. Yeah, you plug h back in the equation. So this becomes 2 times 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And 1 plus 2 is positive 3, like that. So we have negative 9 times 2. It's negative 18. OK, there you go. That's our k value. So what's our axis of symmetry here? What's the equation for axis of symmetry? It's just um, this line, right? And we know h is 1. We know this point right here is 1. This point there is 1 comma negative 18. So what's the equation for the red dotted line there that goes through the x value of 1? x equals 1. x equals 1. And we have answered every single question here. So x is symmetry is x equals 1. Vertex is 1 comma negative 18. Y intercept is negative 16. And 0 is 4 and negative 2. OK? Just like that, it's it's pretty straightforward once you figure this out. Uh, I'm going to show you why this equation is. Now we know the equation in this line is x equals 1. But why? It's because you can take any point on this line. There's a constant, right? Let's list out the points on this dotted line. 1, 3. 1, negative 2, or positive 2. There's an infinite number of points. As you can see, it doesn't matter where we are. Every single point is going to be, every single x value of the point is a constant. You see this? So that's why the equation of that line is x equals 1. We don't care about what the y value is. The y value is going to fluctuate, but the x value, no matter which point you pick, is always going to be 1. That's why the equation is x equals 1. Same reason why this equation is y equals 1. It's because you can pick any point on this line. The x value is going to fluctuate, okay? And the x value is going to be whatever it needs to be. But the y value 
if you list out the points, you'll see that the y values will always be a constant of one. That's why the best way to represent that line is just state what the constant is. Everything else fluctuates, but the constant is going to be the same. What's the degree of this function? Two. Two. Opening up or down? It's opening up. Yeah, it's opening up. So y-intercept, very easy, right? Y-intercept, just plug x as zero. So this will be y equals 0 minus 2 squared. That's going to be positive or negative 4? Positive 4 or negative 4? Negative. Uh, so let's see. So 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Then we have negative 2 squared. Squared just means you're multiplying by yourself. So it's negative 2 mm -hmm. times negative 2. It's going to become positive 4. Positive 4. Whenever you square something, right, the output is always going to be a positive number. Doesn't matter if there's a negative sign in here. Square of anything is going to be a positive number. Now look at this. I'm going to give you something super weird. What else can we we can just put? So we have some nasty function here. This is just a made up function. Can't even imagine what it looks like. But is the output of this going to be positive or negative? Positive. Positive, right? We don't care what this is. There's a squared here. It's always going to be positive. Same reason here. This is going to be positive 4. Um, X-intercept. This is going to be a little bit tricky because, hmm, let's see. X-intercept, he said y is 0. So you get 0 equals x minus 2 squared. How do you solve this for x? So you want to get rid of the square there. How do you get rid of a square? What's the inverse operator of a square? Like how plus is minus? Square root, exactly. Square root both sides. What's the square root of 0? Square root of 0. It's just 0. It's just 0. So 0 equals, again, we're square rooting both sides. 0 equals um, the square root of squared is nada, disappears. Then you get x as 2, right? Now this one's a little bit special. It's because if you look at it from a different perspective, instead of doing it this way, the square root approach, what you can do is you can turn this into x minus 2 times x minus 2. And you'll see that you're going to get the same answer. x minus 2 is equal to 0. x is 2, x is 2, right? I just split apart. Um, the square into something times something because x squared is just x times x. 2 squared is just 2 times 2. Same idea here. x minus 2 squared is x minus 2 times x minus 2. Uh, it allows us to write it this way, right? And we get, look at the difference. If you do the square root approach, you get one solution. If you do it this approach, you're going to get two solutions, but the solutions are the same. What does that mean? This is a case of something called repeated root, OK? Repeated root. Um, there's multiple ways to label this. Another way would be um, 2, right? The x-intercept of 2 has an order of 2. Order just means how many times it repeats, OK? When this happens, okay, when this happens, what that means is there's a turning point at that x-intercept. Whenever you have a repeating root, just two though. 
or four, turning point. Any even repeating root, there's going to be a turning point. Now, what do I mean by this? Let's say your quadratic looks something like this. You can imagine the x-intercept is going to be negative 3 and 2. These are distinct, OK? There are two distinct roots. Roots just means the x-intercept, means the zeros, means the solution. They all mean the exact same thing. Roots, zeros, solutions, x-intercept, right? multiple names for the same thing. It's just the part of the graph where the graph touches the x-intercept. They all mean the exact same thing. This is a case of two distinct roots, OK? This is a case of a repeated root. Whenever a root repeats, there is going to be a turning point at that point. Um, here, look at this. I can show you. We've done this before, but it was a while ago. You see this x-intercept? What's the x-intercept for this? Just this guy. You just flip the sign, yeah? Just flip the sign. That one has an x-intercept of 2. Or you can solve it like this, like we just did. You solve it like this, you're going to see that x is 2. Does this repeat? Is this a repeated root? Repeat just means it has a power of more than one, OK? This one repeats because it, it's a square. This one, the x-intercept is going to be 0. You just look at them individually. Like set this equal to 0, you're going to get x is equal to 0. That one also repeats. What's the x-intercept for this one? x plus 6. Negative 6. Negative 6. Does that repeat? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. And this is, we're talking about even rep repeats, OK? Even, even powers. Whenever something repeats even, evenly, then you're going to get a turning point. So the graph of this, OK, the graph of this, look at this. So we know there's an x-intercept at 2. There's an x-intercept at 0. There's an x-intercept at negative 6. We don't know, um, well, I know, but you, you may not know this, but the, the degree of this entire polynomial is 10. You just add up, you just add up all the powers. If it's an even degree polynomial, it starts in quadrant two, ends in quadrant one, OK? Not super important for the topic we're doing, but I just want to show you the idea of repeated roots, what's going to happen. So at negative 6, yeah, at negative 6, you're going to get a turning point. Repeated root equals a turning point like that. At 0, because we repeat there as well, you're going to get a turning point there as well like that. And then at 2, it's going to repeat again you're going to get another turning point. You see these turning points here? Mm -hmm. Turning points just means you have a mini parabola. Turning points just means if you zoom in on it, you're going to get a quadratic looking function. So that's what a repeated root does, OK? There's a turning point. Repeated root just means even numbers. Um, here, look at this. Just another last example here. x minus 3 cubed, x plus 2 squared. The x-intercept here, just flip the signs. It's going to be negative 3 and negative 2. Negative 3 has an odd reputation, uh, reputation right? It has an order of 3. See this? This this is the mm -hmm. order. So what happens with odd is that it's going to, it's not going to, there's no turning point. It's going to pass through it. So at positive 3, this guy is positive, so it's going to start here. It's going to end there. At positive 3, what's going to happen is it's going to cross it like that. So if the order is odd, it crosses it. If the order is even, it's going to be a turning point. So at negative 2, I didn't draw this right, but at negative 2, it should have. So this looks something like this. At negative 2, there's a turning point. And it's going to pass through some y-intercept. We're not concerned with that. But at positive 3, it's going to cross. Look at the difference. If it's an even order, it's going to be a turning point. If it's an odd, it's going to pass. OK, odd, it's going to pass. Anyways, back to this question. 
we know positive two is even, yeah? Uh, it's a repeated root, um, even root. This entire chapter, we're not gonna go beyond x squared. So there's gonna be a turning point. And that's something that they won't tell you, but that's something that comes from a higher level course, but that's something you should keep in mind. Power two means there's a turning point. That'll save you some time. Um, and what's next? So axis of symmetry. We need to find the h value. So the h is just going to be x1 plus x2 divided by 2. Remember, both your x-intercepts are 2s. They repeat. They're not distinct. Distinct means unique, OK? Like 2 and 3 would be distinct. But we have 2 and 2. This is a case of repeated root. Your h is also going to be 2. Now plug k back in there. I know k is going to be 0 because at positive 2, there's a turning point. And the only way that's possible is if the y value here is a 0. But we can prove it. Put 2 back into the equation. So you get 2 minus 2 squared, 0 squared, it's a 0. Mm, what's the axis of symmetry? This is the dotted line for axis of symmetry. It passes through the x value of 2. It's just x equals 2. And that's everything that they want us to do. OK? Does this make mm -hmm. sense? It, it's not, it doesn't. It's not that difficult, right? You see, you just plug something as 0, something as 0. This is super easy. You just find the average and plug it back in. It's a very straightforward process. For a question like this, the most difficult question they can ask you, and this is going to be the case for anything in maths, is if they give you an equation to begin with, then it's pretty simple, OK? Because it's very robotic. Like If you can solve one, you can solve all of them if they give you an equation. But the hardest questions are not going to give you an equation. They'll give you a word problem from which you need to be able to deduce an equation. And that's definitely way trickier. That, that will be like a four plus question. This is another interesting question here. Now, now we're working backwards. So we know the x-intercepts, and we know the y-intercepts. We don't know where the vertex is. Looks like it's at negative 0.5 and something. But we don't know where this is, OK? Not precisely anyways. So we can't use this. You can't use vertex to answer this question, because it's not clear what it is. We have the x-intercepts of negative 2 and positive 1. We have the y-intercept of 0, 10. That's the only thing we have. Which form of a quadratic uses x-intercepts? There are three forms. You remember the standard form, factored form, and the vertex form. Which one is best for x-intercepts? It's the factored form. Because factored form has this a, x minus x1 are uh, S, sometimes they use ST, sometimes they use X1, X2. This, that S and T is the same thing as your first X-intercept and your second X-intercept. This is the factored form, OK? Whenever they give you the X-intercepts, you need to use the factored form. You can use any form, but factored form would be the best. Actually, you can't use any form, because to use the vertex form, you need the vertex, which we don't have. Um, standard form, you could. But that'll make things difficult. This is the best approach. So all you got to do, look at this. This is very simple. All you got to do is plug. You see these, this 2 and negative 1? Negative 2 and positive 1, sorry? Mm -hmm. Negative 2 is your s value. And positive 1 is your t value. All you got to do is just plug that into this equation. So you get y equals a, x minus s. So x minus negative 2, that's your s value. And then x minus t, t is just 1. Then you get this, y equals a, 
x plus 2, x minus 1. Now the only thing missing is the a value. And they have given us a point we can use to find the a value. Right? And they have given us the y-intercept. All you got to do is then, once you've plugged in the x-intercept, just plug the y-intercept, and that will give you the final answer. So we're going to plug y as 10. A, we don't know. That's what we're trying to find. And we're going to plug x as 0, like that. So you get 2 times negative. Again, 0 plus 2 is a 2. 0 minus 1 is a negative 1. A times 2 times negative 1 is negative 2a equals 10. And therefore, a is negative 5. Does it make sense for a to be negative 5 for this graph? Are we expecting a positive A or a negative A? Negative. Negative, right? Because it's opening downward. So it does make sense that your A is negative. So somehow if you ended up with a positive A, you know something went wrong. And now we just plug everything in. We know our A is negative 5. Okay. Or you can just replace the A right here. We know this A is negative 5. And this would be the final answer for this equation in factored form, OK? Mm -hmm. um, now I'm kind of curious. Let's try doing this using the standard form, which is not the best approach, not even close. But let's see if we can do it. I'm curious. And if your teacher is super picky, he might ask you to use the standard form. Is it possible? y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, yeah? Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is we're going to plug the first x-intercept. Remember, the x-intercept of negative 2 has coordinates negative 2, 0. So we're going to plug y as 0, x as negative 2. And we know what the c value is. The c value is 10, because that's the y-intercept. Plus b times negative 2 plus 10. So you get 0 is equals to 4a minus 2b plus 10. So you get a linear equation here. Negative 10 is equals to 4a minus 2b. Similarly, we're going to plug the other x-intercept in. The x-intercept of 1 has coordinates 1, 0. Plug y as 0, plug x as 1. So you get a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus the c value is 10. So this gives us. Uh, negative 10 is equals to um, a plus b, yeah? Mm -hmm. And now we're just going to make a quick substitution. I'm going to say a is negative 10 minus b. Now, this goes back to chapter 1. We have two linear equations here. This is our equation. This is our second equation. We're just going to sub something back into the other equation. And turns out this is solvable because we have two equations and two unknowns. So this becomes negative 10 is equals to 4 times negative 10 minus b uh, minus 2b. So you get negative 10 is equals to negative 40 minus 4b minus, minus 6b. So you get negative 10 plus 40 divided by negative 6 is our b value. That's 30 over negative 6, that's negative 5. Plug that back in here. And that will give us our a value. So a is going to be negative 10 minus negative 5, negative 10 plus 5. Our a value is there for negative 5. And that's what we got before as well. Therefore, the equation for this graph in standard form is going to be y equals negative 5 squared ax squared. Uh, b was... I erased it. B was also negative 5. So plus negative 5B plus 10. And that's the equation in standard form. This approach is a little bit difficult, as you can see. Uh, it's not super difficult. It just turns into a linear system. But it's not efficient. The best way to approach is to use the factored form. But then again, you might get a question that asks you to find the answer in standard form. In that case, maybe this is easier. Okay?
So that is finding, working backwards using the correct form. And again, you can't use vertex form. So there's only really two ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you the third way as well, cause why not? Um, let's see, let's, I'm gonna show you the third way, just, just to make sure we are on the same page here, cause there's only three forms. What about the vertex form approach? Can we use that? Um, the vertex form has this A, x minus h squared plus k. Now h is simply the, the midpoint of the two x-intercepts, which they've already given us. To find k though, you're gonna have to plug it back into the equation. So vertex form to start off with, you can't use this in the very beginning. Can't use this to start off because we're missing key pieces of the information here. You can only use this, only use this for this question anyways, after you found the equation. So either you find it in the standard form or you find it in the factored form and then you can give the answer in, in the vertex form equation. That's because to find the k value, you're going to have to plug it back into the main equation. So if you don't have the main equation to begin with, you can't write the answer in the vertex form. So now to find the k, I'm going to plug it back in here. I'm going to plug negative 1 back in there. So you get negative 5 minus 5. Uh, sorry, it's not going to be negative 5. It's going to be negative 5 plus 5 plus 10 negative two plus no, no, this is not right. So this should be negative one over two. That's our h value. Oh, this is gonna be a decimal. So negative 0 0.5 is our h value. Yeah, negative 0 0.5. So now we're gonna plug a negative 0 0.5 in there. Minus uh, five times negative 0 0.5 plus 10. So let's plug this in. Negative 5 times 0 0.5 squared minus 5 times is negative 0 0.5 plus 10. And that gives me 11.25. And that does look like it's over 11. Not exactly sure where. But now we know for a fact that that point up there is 11.25. Therefore, the answer in vertex form, again, we know what A is. A is negative 5. It's going to be Y equals negative 5 x minus h, h was negative 0 0.5. So this becomes plus 0 0.5 squared. And the k value, which is founded, it's 11.25. So there you go. That's the equation in all three forms. OK, that's how do you mm -hmm. do it. Again, you need to ideally, ideally, you'd use the factored form, but you can use the standard form. I'm sure they use the factored form, yeah. So they're using um, R and S as the x-intercepts. We're calling it S and T. They're using R. It doesn't matter. This is your first x-intercept. This is your second x-intercept. It's going to differ depending on the book you use. But that's just the x-intercept. Matching is always fun. Alrighty, so what are the x-intercepts for A? Two and negative three. Yeah, two and negative three. Is it opening up or down? Up. It's opening up, right? Two and negative three. There's only one graph here that has x-intercepts of two and negative three. Which one is it? Two and negative three. 
it's the second one, yeah? This one, 2 and negative 3. Mm -hmm. So A is going to be this one. So this is in the bag. Look at this. This is very simple. The second one has x-intercepts of um, 3 and negative 2. 3 and negative 2. It's Again, it's opening upwards. It has to be this one. There's only one graph that has x-intercepts of 3 and negative 2. So this one is just being able to read coordinates. The third one is going to be negative 2 and negative 3. There's only one graph that has negative 2 and negative 3. It's the first one. Fourth one. Is this opening up or down? tricky um to find if something is opening up or down you just want to multiply the x's individually so here if you multiply this negative x times x you're gonna get negative x squared it's opening um downwards okay crash. Anyways, this one's opening downwards. The x-intercept is um, positive 3 and negative 2. So positive 3, negative 2 opening downwards has to be this one. And just like that, you can read off the coordinates. Anyways, here, let's look at this. And I give you a few examples. Or you can even like switch the order like this. Is this opening up or down? Multiply the x terms. It's opening down. It's opening down, OK? It's opening down because when you take your 2x, you multiply this with negative 3x, you get negative 6x squared, OK? See that? That's your a value. Mm -hmm. A is negative 6. And this is just to throw you off, OK? Remember, x4 and x2, they're almost exactly the same thing. They share a lot of properties. Now, this one is not a quadratic. This one is a quartic. Quartic means a degree four polynomial. But the idea is the same. Is it opening up or down? Look at this. You take your x, right? You take your another x here. You take your another x here. You take your another x here. You just multiply them. x times x, uh, so this becomes negative x squared. And 3x times 4x is 12x squared. You see this? Negative 12x4. Opening down, OK? Mm -hmm. Opening down. And that's, again, your a value. You just multiply all the x terms. That will give you the a value every single time. Easy question. It's given us the thingy in factored form, the equation. They have given us our x-intercept. So even if they didn't give us, see if the if the first line didn't exist, right? You see this? It has given us the x-intercept. Zeros means the x-intercept. Okay? They may not give you this. This is I don't know what they're making things easy by giving you that. If they just said the x-intercepts are this and this, find the a value. You know you have to use the factored form. Okay? Vertex form is useless here. You can't go anywhere with the vertex form. You could go somewhere the standard form, but that's not efficient. Factored form is the way to go. And for us, they already gave it to us. So all you got to do, check this out. Plug your um, values into the equation, OK? So y becomes a, x minus r, r is 2. So it becomes x minus 2, x minus s. So s is negative 6. So what does x minus x s turn into? What does this, this turn into? Just replace that s with negative 6. x plus 6? Exactly, x plus 6. 
This is the first thing that you do. And if they have given us a point, next thing to do, there's only one thing you can do. Plug Y as five, plug X as three, solve for A. So five equals A, three minus two, three plus six. So this becomes A times one is just A, times nine equals five. A is gonna become nine, or sorry, five over nine. And that's the final answer because they just want the A value. Opening up or down? Up, up right? Look at this, it's a three-step answer. It's not, not tricky at all. And the, the, you would do this even if they didn't give you this. Factored form is definitely the most useful or the most, you always wanna take things into factored form because x-intercepts are very important because x-intercepts are solutions to most problems. That's, that's why. Now, A and B is extremely similar to the questions that we just did. For A and B, um, all you got to do is plug R as 4 and S as 2, and then plug this as X and Y. Same question for B. Plug R as 4, plug S as negative 2, and plug this as X and Y, and that'll give you A and B. That's very similar to the last question that we did. Let's look at C. So now they've given us the things, the zeros. Now they've given us a minimum value. Where does a minimum value occur? At the vertex. At the vertex, right? So they're giving you a hint. So for C, right? When you plug it in, you're going to get x minus 5 and x minus 0, which is just x. We need to find the a value. That means we need to plug a point as x and y. Now, they've only given us the minimum value. Minimum and maximum values are always the y values, by the way. Like this, this, this is the minimum value here. That represents the y value. So they've given us the y value of a point, but we don't know what the x value is. How do you find the x value of a vertex? That is your h. Yeah, remember that. x value of the vertex is h. This is k. x value of a vertex is h. How do you find h? You add the two x intercepts. Oh, yeah, you add. Try two. That's it. So h becomes 5 plus 0. 5 over 2 is your h value. And your k value is negative 10. And that, there you go. That's our point to plug in as x and y. I'm going to do this because it involves fractions. a is going to be 5 over 2 minus 5 and 5 over 2. Yeah, like that. And again, we don't have, we're don't. we not in grade 8 or 9 anymore. We can use calculators. We don't have to like to take the LCDs and whatnot. So I'm just going to plug this times this on a calculator. 5 divided by 2 minus 5 times 5 divided by 2. I get um, negative 20. Again, some calculators will spit out a fraction. Some will spit out a decimal. Doesn't matter. Okay, like that. Now we're trying to solve for A. All you got to do is divide both sides by negative 25 over 4. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in negative 10 divided by the answer, the answer button on the calculator, because the answer I just got is this number here. So I don't even have to retype this. Answer is usually a second function equals to. That'll give you the answer. So on a scientific calculator anyway. So I'm just going to do negative 10 divided by answer. That gives me A is 8 over 5, or 1.6 if, if your calculator gives you decimals. And that's the end of that question, OK? So remember, to find the A value in a question like this, you need the, if they give you the x-intercepts, you need one extra point. A and B, they gave us the point to begin with, so it just became a plug and chuck question. But for C and D, look at this. D is the exact same thing. Minimum value, yeah, and maximum value. Now, they've given us the K again 
right? You see this maximum value of six? That's the Y value of the vertex. So that's our K. They've given us K for D, but we don't have our H. So all you gotta do is H is gonna be five plus negative three divided by two. Two divided by two, it's one. And our equation is gonna look like this. A, X minus R, R is five. X minus S, S is negative three. So this becomes positive three. And now we have something to plug at X and Y because Y is six and that's our maximum. And that happens when the H value or when the X value is one, like that. So you get A times negative four times four equals six. So you get A is equal to six over negative 16. And if you want to reduce it, it becomes negative three over eight. And there you go. That's how you do D, okay? C and D, mm -hmm. same question. They have given you the K to find a point to plug in as X and Y. All you got to do is find the H. Uh, now, E is tricky. E is tricky because you don't know um, your R and your S. You see, look at E. They have not given you the x-intercepts but they have given us two points, right? That we can use. So let's look at E. We don't know the X and Y, uh, sorry. We don't know R and S. We're just gonna plug this as X and Y to begin with. So this becomes Y is equals to zero is our Y value, so zero, A, now the x value is five, right? And that's not the x-intercept. Oh, actually, look at this point. This point is unique. You remember this? Five, zero. Uh, we don't know where it's opening, right? But look at this. Five, zero is on the x-axis. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Five comma zero is on the x-axis. If it has a vertex on the x-axis, we don't care if it's opening up or down, right? There's going to be a turning point there, remember? Vertex on the x-axis means there's a turning point at that x-intercept. That means it's a repeated root, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, that, see, that's, that's going to be a four-plus question because you need to know if something, if there's a vertex on the x-intercept, it's going to flip. It's going to go up. Blink. It's going to go this route. So therefore, we have the answer here. We don't need to use this approach. This is what's going to look like. If it's a repeated root, you're going to be in this form. And we know R is 5. Or you can also be in this. If, if you want to use this approach, it's the same thing. We know both R and S are going to be 5 because it's a repeated root. Like that. If you want, you can write it like this, a x minus five squared. And now we need to find our a value. They have already given us a point to plug in. Next, plug in y is negative 10, plug in a x as a zero. So you get negative 10 is equals to a times 25. So therefore a is negative 10 over 25. So it's opening downwards, it's gonna be this graph, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's something very, very easy to forget or like not, not realize that they are actually giving us the x-intercepts. We're not gonna do this precisely, but what happens is the higher the A value, the thinner the graph becomes. So two and negative three. Let's say when it's three, right? You can graph it precisely using a graphing calculator or using a table of values. It's opening up because the A value is three. So it's gonna look something like this. This is when A value is three, okay? Now look at this. If a value is four, 
it's going to become thinner. It's passing through the same intercepts, okay? But it's going to be thinner. You can have a value of 100. Look at this. If you have an a value of 100, uh, I've very, it's going to be very thin, okay? It's going to be like super thin. So the higher the A value, okay, the more graph sh shrinks in this direction. You're squeezing it inside towards the Y axis, okay? Mm -hmm. So to answer this question, if A is zero, then you get nothing. If A is zero, this you get, because everything will be zero, you get Y equals to zero, which is just the X axis. That's when A is zero. But when you get one, two, three, this is probably going to be 3. This is 2. This is 3. Again, it's not precise. If you want precise, um, use a table of values. And then for 1, it's going to be even more thinner. Sorry. I flipped this. The higher the A value, the thinner it is. So this is going to be a equals 3. This is going to be a equals 2. And a equals 1 would probably be very fat, so like that. That'll be a equals 1. The higher the a value, the more shrunk the graph is, OK? You're squeezing it inside in this direction. If you want a name for it, this thing, a value, determines something called the vertical stretch factor. You'll see this in grade 11. We've, we've done this, but it's not part of this course. But A determines how stretched or compressed the graph is. The higher the A value, value the more shrunk it's going to be. Okay, It's going to go towards the Y axis. Same thing with the negatives. Nothing changes with the negatives. This is going to be when A is 1. This is going to be when A is 2. And this is going to be when a is 3. It's just going to be shrunk to the inside. The higher the a value, the more thinner the graph becomes. So that's something for you to remember. It doesn't matter if it's opening up or down. This is a is 3. This is a is 2. Same idea. Cool? Mm -hmm. So a determines how shrunk it is. Um, Sketch the graph of this when s is 3. So again, very simple thing. So positive 2 and positive 3 are our x-intercepts. To find the y-intercept, just plug x as 0. So this becomes a 0 minus 2 times 0 minus 3. It becomes a positive 6, right? So right now, and then we can also find the vertex if you wanted. h is just going to be 2 plus 3 divided by 2, 1.5. Plug 1.5 in there to find the k value. So what does this become? Two, it's going to be 2.5, not 1.5, 2.5. So 2.5 2 minus 2 times 2.5 minus 3. So our k value is negative 0 0.35. So our graph is going to look something like this. Not super important, but there you go. That's our graph right now. Again, if. Um, S, we're changing S values. If S is 2, look at this. If S is 2, you're going to become x minus 2 squared. That's a repeated root. Okay, Your graph is going to look like this. If S is 1, that means you have 1 intercept here, 1 intercept here. The vertex is going to flip. So is the y intercept. It's going to look like this. Now we're not changing the a value. We're changing the x intercept. If the x intercept, this one is negative 2, then your graph is going to look like this, negative 2 and positive 2. You have the two x-intercepts, and this is going to be your vertex. The main thing here is it doesn't matter what s becomes, OK? s is just the x-intercept. 
the x-intercept has no say about the a value. In other words, the x-intercepts do not dictate in which direction the graph opens. So it doesn't matter what s is, right? You see this? You take your x value, you take your x value, you multiply them, you get 1x squared. Your a value will always be 1, right? That means your graph is always going to be opening upwards. It doesn't matter what the x-intercept is. Cool? Mm -hmm. So x-intercept doesn't have the power to dictate whether the graph opens up or down. That's dictated strictly by the x values or the coefficient of the x's. Uh, all right, let's let's call it a day there for today. Okay, thank you. See ya.